Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so once again, I don't know what I want to talk about this time. Um, I did have a thing on my Facebook timeline this morning letting me know that it's been three years since I got my wonderful little gerbil babies who are currently fast asleep in their cage. <laughs> um, so for those of you who are not aware, because uh, you haven't seen some of my past videos, I do have two adorable little devils. Um, I got them as a early birthday present to myself uh, three years ago. Um, that particular, it, it, yes, yeah, so it was the very beginning of March that I got them. My birthday is obviously partway through March, so I'm still approaching my birthday now. <laughs> so they were definitely an early birthday present. Um, my original plan had been to get them a little bit closer to my birthday. Um, I was literally just kind of looking for gerbils at that point, um, thinking it might take me a little bit of a while to actually find the ones um, that I would want. Um, but this was sort of, this was the, when we had the late snow, the, the snow right at the very end of February which kind of went into the beginning of March as well. Um, and this was obviously back when I lived in the previous place. So um, I would go down to, well, I, I lived fairly close to Pets at Home. So I would go there either like on my way home from work or sometimes on my days off. Because <laughs> I was trying to like pick up all the stuff that I needed for, um, welcoming in the gerbils um so basically when saw they had a selection of gerbils um i don't think they'd had for a couple of weeks i think they'd just gotten in a new collection of gerbils um and there were lots of different colored ones um but these two just caught my eye mostly because I, I think um, one of the visits or the first visit, um, they were the only ones who were active and um, the one who would become known as Salaby <laughs> uh, was grooming the one who would become known as me. Um, that was very cute and very adorable and every single time I sort of went to sort of see them, um, you could pretty much guarantee those two were like together and more often than not Salaby was grooming you. It's very adorable. Um, and I couldn't go in on one of the days, I think it was a Sunday, because um, I was working and by the time I finished work, Pets at Home was closed because it was a Sunday, so obviously it shut earlier. Um, by the time I actually, like, it, it was quite a bit of a walk from work. It was like almost where I lived and it's like, you're talking like a half hour walk um, from work in order to get home, so it's like a 20 minute bit. And obviously I would get changed after I finished work. So even if I was finishing work on time, it's pretty much five o'clock by the time um, I was getting there. So on a Sunday, it was, it was shut. I think it shut like 4.30 or something. Um, so I, I wasn't able to go in on the Sunday. Um, I think I was working the Monday and I went in and I, I wasn't working the Tuesday. And I went in and all the gerbils, uh, apart from the two that would become known as Mew and Celebi, had gone. <laughs> so, so there were just two gerbils left. Um, and at that point I was like, these are my gerbils, this, this is fate, these are my gerbils. Um, so I kind of, I went home, I really thought about it, and I phoned up my mum because I had the next day off, I was like, because it, it was still quite snowy out, so it was quite icy and quite slippery, and I was like, I don't really want to be carrying them home in this weather, but I was supposed to be seeing my mum the next day. So I phoned her up, and I was like, hey, mum, I found the gerbils that I want. Is it okay if we can get them tomorrow? Um, sort out getting them tomorrow. Um... In, yeah, basically, <laughs> basically, you, you kind of know the story from there. Um, 
So I can't remember if I did it before or after I'd phoned her, but I did make another trip down to Pets at Home that evening, made sure they were still there, picked up, because like the bedding was, I think, I think bedding and food were the last two things that I needed. So I'd, um, I'd taken my polo long trolley with me, um, so sort of because I, you know, the bedding was going to be quite heavy and the food was going to be quite heavy on top of that as well. So I got like the last things that I needed um, and they were still there. And then I went down, I think, before meeting my mum the following morning, made sure that I couldn't reserve them. Um, I did ask, I couldn't reserve them. So made sure they were still there and met up with my mum for lunch. And then we went and then we got them. And, uh, <laughs> and I was very happy because they were adorable. Um, so uh, I think my mum needed to pop in somewhere. So whilst I was like going through the process of like, cause they, they pet the home, do like make sure they you know go through with you and like do like a little pet exam so that you can see that the pet is nice and healthy when they've given it to you. So if anything happens after that point, it's your fault. <laughs> um, and basically to make sure that you're happy, uh, make sure that you know what you're doing. And I was like, yeah, now I've done a bit more, I've done some research. I know, you know, um, this, that and the other. I also asked for some bedding um, from my baby bin for them because I was like, because that's going to help them with their transition, like just to prove that I've done my research because, you know, gerbils are easily unsettled. I don't like going ages without being cleaned out but they can go a bit longer than normal pets can because it unsettles them quite a bit when they are cleaned out because of the loss of their their own scent so like you, you have to make sure that you're like leaving a little bit of the old bedding and stuff like that so yeah I, I asked for a little bit of the old bedding just so that they had something to make them nice and calm once they'd um made it to to the flat because like with small animals and like rodents in particular um like their, their initial sort of transition can be very stressful for them. And even if they are otherwise healthy, that can cause issues. Um, so uh, I was just sort of like finishing, filling in like the, the pavement stuff and, and the little paperwork and stuff that you have to do when my mum came in. It was perfectly timed. <laughs> and they were in these two little separate boxes, um, which I did actually give them to chew through. <laughs> Like amongst the first sort of like toys and stuff, um, I gave it, I gave them that to sort of chew through, so they, they chewed, chewed through that quite nicely. <laughs> um, uh, so we, we then got them home, got them home nice and safe, got them settled in the cage, and then obviously I took some lots of lots of uh, stuff for Facebook for their, their first day, which obviously has now popped up on my timeline three years later. So yeah, they are. So they would have been about 12-ish weeks um, when I got them. That's what I was told. They're about 12 weeks. Um, so they are about three years and 12 weeks at this point. Um, <laughs> so they are, uh, I mean, Jebel sort of live uh, for about five years. Um, so they are over the halfway mark. They're like middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> they are middle-aged jewels. They are very cute. Um, and they do, like, a lot of the personality that they have now, there were definitely, like, early traits of it very early on. I mean, Yi was definitely the more confident one early on. Um, she she likes being not picked up and sort of cuddled as much as... Um, she likes being interacted with um so she'll sort of like sit on the edge of her play area and like stare at me until like I put my hand over and then she'll crawl onto my hand and then she'll like crawl out she wants to eat my clothes and back before I started updating my wardrobe um because the clothes were kind of like hand-me-downs from my mom um I didn't really care that much about them <laughs> I'll, I'll admit I didn't really care that much about them so I allowed them to be too to hell um so uh, it was it was either that or she chewed my skin to hell. Um, I mean, I yeah. <laughs> like during the summer, I end up with um, not necessarily bite marks, but I, I think she's kind of like grooming rather than chewing um, per se when she does um, 
when she does go up my arm because uh, occasionally she's definitely licking um but yeah she she just wants to sort of yeah she, she's dreadful it's just what it's not like painful biting but it's just what they do um but i can like end up with quite a few marks on my arms which is why i was kind of like yeah just have my sleeve instead save my arm um so yeah she's she's definitely the uh the more adventurous one she'll sort of like come out and i will like let her run around and let her like play uh across the couch and then she'll come back and she'll sort of like sit there for a bit and she'll let me pet her They'll both let me pet, pet them. Um, Salome's less keen on it. She prefers to sort of keep to herself. She can entertain herself. And then she brings me endlessly. She's, it, it's weird. You'd think the more affectionate one would like the attention more. Um, but no, Mew likes the attention. Whereas Celebi is sort of more affectionate towards Mew than I think Mew is towards Celebi. Um, but no, they get on great. They they do. They they are the perfect pair of gerbils to 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 have gotten. I like, quite often refer to them as my little snow babies because it was snowing. <laughs> it was snowing when I got them. Uh, well, not when I got them, but it was snowing around the time that I got them. So I quite often refer to them as my little snow babies because why not refer to them as my little snow babies? They're, they're my little snow babies. Um. And yeah, they they they've definitely got their own sort of little personalities. Um, Celery likes food a lot more than I think Mew does. Um, I'm basing that on the fact that uh, Celery is a lot heavier than Mew. <laughs> I mean, it's it's only like twenty grams heavier, but when Celery like drops, you hear a thud. You don't hear quite so much of a thud when he does. <laughs> Celery has a definite weight to her. You can like almost, uh, and this is kind of, um, I think, because I can feel weight a little bit um, thanks to, to work. So obviously I work in fast food. I like filling up with the fizzy drinks or like the hot drinks or stuff like that. Um, you can sort of sometimes tell if they're underfilled by the weight because you get so used to sort of feeling like, and it's like, not like a huge amount of difference but you can sort of feel the difference and it's very much the same with um with me and Celebi. I can feel there's a little bit of a difference in their weight <laughs> but it's fine they're both healthy weights I don't weigh them too too often but I do sort of weigh them sort of a couple of times a year just to make sure they're sort of within what is healthy for um for them and they are both a healthy weight um, they don't get too many treats because I well the way I sort of do treats with them is when I clean them out um, to sort of settle them down I will sort of sprinkle treats all around their play area not in their cage but around their play area um, I also mix so I get them a food which is just um, pellets so it's to stop the selective feeding but I'll mix treats in with that, so they'll have like mostly pellets, but they'll have like a few treats mixed in with that as well, uh, just to give them sort of a little bit of variety and a little bit of texture. Um, I've tried fresh fruit with them, I've tried fresh fresh veg with them. They don't really take much of an interest in it. Um, they do get a lot of dried fruit and veg, which they seem to prefer. Um, so yeah, they 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 seem to be reasonably healthy. Um, as I said, Celebi is definitely more of a foodie um, than Mew is. They both really like mill mealworms. Uh, mealworms. Um, I say mealworms more because I refer to them as mealy worms, <laughs> but they both really like their mealworms. Um, so yeah, they're they're very cute. They're very very. As I said, they definitely have their own little personalities. It's like, uh, so Mew prefers interacting with Mew. Celebi likes to go up on top of the cage, um, which is less of a problem now that they've got a proper play area. It was more of an issue in the setup I had in the old flat um, and the setup I had here before they got their own play area. But now that they've got their own play area, it's, it's less of an issue. They can go up on top of the cage. They're not going to go anywhere. There's, there's nowhere they can go because it's all... Um, it's not like fully, fully enclosed, but it's enclosed enough for it to be fine for him to go on top of the cage. I just have to listen to that thudding noise every time. Celebi throws herself back down again. <laughs> um, 
Mia does go up on there, but she's not as inclined to. Celebi will go up on there, up there. She'll be up there for a while, and she'll just sort of like be hanging out. Um, and quite often, that's where I'll pet her because she'll be like a little bit less skittish up there. Um, but mostly, as as I said, with with, with Celebi, I do interact with her as much as I can. But I understand that she's not the type of gerbil who really appreciates it as much as Mew does. So I tend to. I, I, I handle her only so that she remains used to being handled um, for the occasions where I do need to handle her for various things, like when I'm cleaning them out. Um, it's actually very useful. Like it's like old setup. They they do have hamster balls, um, which is what I used in the old setup for cleaning them out because that's the safest way of um, making sure that they were somewhere secure and I was I would keep an eye on them. Um, but they would keep breaking their hamster balls open <laughs> or unscrewing the top. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just like the style of hamster balls that I got. Um, but they, they seemed very good at escaping from their hamster balls. So it wasn't their safest setup for them. Um, but now that I've got the play area, what I tend to do is I'll move them over from the cage into the kitchen. I will clean out the play area. I'll put the new stuff into the play area, fill it with some treats move them from the cage into the play area, which is, again, why I need Celebi to be used to being handled so that I can sort of carry her over um, to the play area. They all hang out, they both hang out in the play area because it's perfectly safe and I know they're not gonna escape from it, clean out the cage in the kitchen. And then um, depending on how active they are being, if they're sort of like in one corner, I can get the cage in with, without worrying about squishing them. Um, but if they're sort of like running around all over the place, I put them back into the cage before putting the cage into the play area so that I don't squish them. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they're they great. They're, as I said, they definitely have their own very distinct little personalities. Um, they're not, you know, they're not like the kind of pick up and cuddly sort of pets because, you know, small animals aren't really the kind of pick up and cuddly sort of pets that's slightly larger. Um, animals can be, um, but it's fine. They're great company, um, and they're 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 so quirky, and they're you know they're very affectionate to each other. Celebi more so than Mew, um, and Mew is Mew is definitely uh, the one who seems to appreciate me being around the most. Um, so I can't really complain about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is the third year of them being a part of my life, which is, you know, fantastic and great and wonderful. And I'll be very sad when, you know, their time comes. I'm not looking forward to that at all. Um, but hopefully they've got a good, good couple of years left in them before that happens. So fingers crossed they, they at least make it to the five year mark. <laughs> I'm, I'm hopeful. They both seem very lively and very active and very healthy at the moment. So there's no reason why they, you know, they, they're not going to be around for at least a good year. Hopefully the full two years, uh, maybe even a little bit longer, because um, like all animals can survive longer than their estimated um, or the, they're expected because, you know, it's all to do with, you know, the individual animal, just like, you know, the, an individual person can be alive for longer than they're expected. So, um, yeah, F fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, okay, so, yeah, I found out to talk about for this vlog. Um, okay, so I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. I know it was very sort of rambly. I know I've sort of told versions of this, um, how I got them story on the vlog before um but it's been a while and you know it's it's sometimes it's nice to look back on on certain things and um whatever else um i hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is i am going to be talking about next time and i will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe see ya